buy and redeem what God has given. I can't pay back what I owe God at all, and neither can you. And the reason for that is because we owe him a debt that is too large to pay. However, costly it absolutely is. It costs us everything we have. And that is right. It costs Jesus his life. It's never going to cost us less than that. It will always cost you. But if it's worth having, then you absolutely need to pay, don't you? And that's why you get those parables in the Gospels about the man who went to find a pearl of great price. And when he found one, he sold everything he had in order to get the pearl. Now the gospel of the kingdom which gives us peace with God, that is the pearl. So there is a cost for discipleship. The cost is, it costs me everything I have. Now one of the things that interests me in this gospel reading this morning is the large crowds that were traveling with Jesus. Let's just put this thing into context. Jesus appears in Galilee and all around and people are drawn to him like a magnet or like a light draws moths. But it's the same people who just a little bit later are saying crucify him because we don't actually know who he is. Now what went wrong? Well one of the things that went wrong was there was a price tag. It's not just something new on the block, let's go in here. It's something that happens, someone actually, and what he said was much too costly for them to hear. So because of the price tag attached, they were happy to get rid of him. And because he was turning the temple worship upside down. Maybe we should have said he was turning the temple worship right side up rather than upside down. But you see, large crowds are not the issue. It's not how big the crowd is. It's how committed the crowd is. You can have a crowd of people, but if they're not committed, well then next week they'll go somewhere else and do something else and do this and do that. We are always looking for something that will satisfy, but the one thing that satisfies us is going to cost us. That's the reason we don't like it. Isn't that true? You see, God makes demands on your time, your efforts, and your energy. And for the most part, we don't like that. Let's be honest. I like Frank. Frank works for me. My name's not Frank, but um, I like Frank. Let's be Frank. And the more honest we get, the more we see that Jesus makes demands which for the most part people are not prepared to pay because it's going to cost. And we have other priorities. So what is the cost? Well, we're going to hear. Firstly, family. Jesus isn't saying here. You see, if I take the Bible and I read it literally, what am I saying? I must go home and hate my family. So, Carolyn, Marianne, and Brahman, I hate you. And I'm going to love. How does that work? See, it doesn't ring right, does it? So, we're not talking literal. Ladies, you're listening. Literal isn't what we're on about here. See, when I say at home, I'm going to do this, they think I'm meaning I'm going to do it now. 
But I never said I would do it now. I just said I would do it at some point. At some point. And those beautiful little words, they are missing. <laughs> At some point. But listen to what he says. So what is it really meaning? Love for family cannot surpass your love for Christ. There's a, in the kingdom of God, there's an order the order is, I'm supposed to love God with my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so are you. Let's say we are. Okay? How does my family life fit in? Well, my family life needs to precede my, my job life or my work life. But it must be inferior to God. So the guys and ladies who want to give themselves wholly to work, and they work non-stop, Monday to Sunday, 24-7, that's not glorifying to God. Yes? Why? Because the priorities are wrong. It's not about work. It's about commitment to God first. My love for God needs to be all-consuming. Then below that, my family needs to come into the picture. Why? Because I can't love God if I can't love the people around me. Who the most difficult to love? The family. Why? Because they know me too well. That's why. And you know what? They know you too well too. Not my family, your family. So the priorities are crucial. And it's only when we get the priorities right that things start to fall into place. So what's the cost here? I need to prioritize my life. So do you. God needs to be first. Work needs to come under my family along with sport. You get a lot of people who take God out and place sport or family or people here. When the priorities are wrong, life doesn't work. It only works when God has the first place, the family fits in underneath that. And you put your heart and soul into your family, not so that you take the place of God, but so that people can see how to get a life ordered with family priority. And the work position comes under that along with sport and other things. When I make sport my God, what happens? The priorities are wrong. South Africans need to hear that. It's not about rugby. And the problem is we get the priorities wrong and what happens when the priorities are wrong? We've got another God. And it isn't the Lord. So, it's loving family less than I love Jesus. Doesn't mean you don't love the family. It's less. Why? Because the priority means to love God. And then he gives three pictures. The first is, it's going to be costly and we're going to have to continually pick up our cross and follow him. What is the cross about? The sacrifice of myself. And we don't like that idea, friends. Why? Because we are egocentric. Yes? yes? It's early in the morning and I'm checking that you're awake. Okay? It's a lot earlier for me than it was for you. This time last week we were still sleeping. It was quarter to nine. It's an hour, and church there starts at half past ten. Um, it means that all your balance is wrong. It is early in the morning, but I need to check that you're with me. Then Jesus gives two examples, and these examples are interesting in counting the cost. A person has a tower, 
And now he's got to count the cost. Do I have enough cash to buy the bricks necessary to complete the job? Or is it going to be one of those jobs that is half finished? I don't know. But weighing up the cost is important if you're going to build something. Same with your faith. We have to weigh up and count the cost. Am I prepared to pay the price that this faith is calling from me? And that's a yes or no answer. But, but count it, I must. Because the purpose of counting the cost is to finish the job. How do we finish this job? To be with the Lord at the end of our life. That's how you finish it. The second example is a very interesting one. If a person has 10,000 men, can they go and defeat somebody with 20,000? I suppose if you were Superman or Superwoman, then maybe you could. But most people would weigh up the cost and say, you know what, I'm going to see a really bad defeat here. I think it's a good idea to go and find out whether the person is open to some peace negotiations. Isn't it interesting, when we go to war and we shoot everybody to smithereens, we have to sit around the table and talk afterwards. Wouldn't it be wiser if we sat around the table first? Yes? It's interesting when you think back of all the wars that we've had, there's been stacks of wars and lots, millions of people have died over all the centuries. Why don't we sit around the table first and say, you know what, maybe we can make it work. So Jesus or the Greek here talks about taking counsel. Sometimes we don't like to take counsel because we don't like what the council's saying. Because the council's saying, you haven't got enough people to deal with these 20,000. Maybe you need to say, what are your offers for peace? But what is the problem with that? We have to say we made a mistake. And we don't like doing that, do we? A little bit like the pharmacy yesterday. Um, I take blood pressure pills and they gave us 10 too few. So I, I, halfway through the holiday, said to Carolyn, um, I'm going to be short of pills. So we had to make a plan to take um, one pill over two days in such a way that I had two pills left. But when I got home on Friday, sadly, there weren't any pills there. So we went to the pharmacy yesterday and said to them, um, yeah, we need a few of these pills. We don't mind buying them or whatever. And the young lady went off and they came back and said, you can have these. There was no apology. We miscounted. You know, we did an audit at the end and discovered we had 10 pills too many. Why is it that human beings find it so hard to say, sorry, or I made a mistake? Ego. Ego. I like it when you respond and I don't even ask the question properly. <laughs> But you see what I'm trying to say? It's interesting, isn't it? So taking counsel is quite important. To become a disciple, I must be prepared to willingly give up what I have. Because Jesus demands 100% of my time, talent, and treasure. He doesn't have, it's not about whether I can fit it in. The issue is, I'm either committed to it or I'm not. But one can't hover between two extremes. So how does this work then? Well, in short, the Holy Spirit comes to give us the ability to examine the cost and then decide to go the whole way with him. 
I must decide where, whether I think eternity is a good place to be with God or not. It's not rocket science. It's actually pretty simple. If I wanted to summarize this passage today, I'd summarize it for you in two sentences. There's a price to pay, and there's a prize at the end. So it's two Ps, very easy. Price and prize. What's the price? The price to pay to follow Christ, I have to give up myself. That's the price. I'm no longer in charge. Christ is the one who I follow. And that's difficult. But there's a corollary to that. Just as there's a price, there's also a reward. So the person who's prepared to pay the price receives a reward. And what's the reward? The reward is you have a relationship with an amazing God who puts priorities out and orders our life aright. So when it is ordered like that, things fit into place. It's not about striving. It's about a reward of having a God who cares for us. Then what's the prize? The prize for following Christ is eternal life. And that cannot be bought. Sadly, the majority of people aren't prepared to pay the price, and so they miss the price. And at the end of their life, they have nothing to show. The question I want to leave with us is this. God's grace is free. That's no question about it. grace means unearned and undeserved. But there's a price tag in order to receive that grace. I have to be prepared to lay down my priorities for God. And my agenda for his agenda. And my direction for his direction. And that's the part that is really difficult. So the question is, am I prepared to do that? Are you? Can we say we will? We can say all the right things. We can do all the right things. We can sing the creed beautifully. The question isn't whether we can sing it. Because in here, it's easy. Let me, let, let me put it differently as I close. Any fool can do it here. The issue isn't, can you do it here? The issue is, can you do it there? That's a whole different ballgame. In here, we can say the right things for a lot of good reasons. It's much more difficult to do it out there. And that's why we need grace. That's why we need to be committed to this thing. Because we can't do it alone. And we can't go it alone. Can we? A little louder? I'm deaf. Thank you. I don't hear the female voice range so well, so I need you to speak more loudly. <laughs> Let's pray. So you've got some work to do this week. We go out of here deciding we're going to commit to doing this one thing really well. We're going to examine the cost and see if we prepare to pay the price. And when we pay, prepare to pay the price, we discover there's a reward. And at the end, the reward is the prize. The prize of following Christ. That's a wonderful reward and gives us peace. Let's pray. 
Father, we thank you so much for your goodness to us. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you that you open um, your heart to us. You fill us with power from on high and you send us out into your world so that we may live for you. Help us to count the cost and then help us to share it with those around us. And we ask this for Jesus' sake. Amen.